Uh, he's, uh, uh, we're all very familiar with, with Pastor Robert. He's been around SP for a long time and uh, has just contributed a tremendous amount of things, not only for our body, for me personally. I think Pastor O is one of my oldest mentors. Uh, even, I think we actually knew each other before I was a Christian. And, uh, I mean, it was a long time ago. And Pastor O has always been very, very gracious uh, to me. Uh, personally, I, don't, I actually don't know why, but he's always shown me a lot of favor. I could always call him up, and he'll always spend time. And, you know, uh, he's a very out-of-the-box kind of guy. Uh, you can tell by his, his Kango hat that he's been wearing for, I think, 20 years now. Uh, he uh, uh, drives a motorcycle. You don't meet too many Korean pastors uh, that do that. And uh, just an incredible man of God. He's uh, a mission mobilizer. He spends half his time in Cambodia uh, doing work out there, and he's also doing his Ph.D. at Oxford uh, Missions. Was it Oxford Center for Missions, Center for missions in, uh, in England? And so God's really using him. He's formulating a lot of things uh, uh, in terms of missions. And even, you know, we had breakfast together, and I feel like my head's going to explode. And a lot to process through. I'm, I'm on, very honest and serious about that. And so we're really blessed to have uh, Pastor O here with us. And so let's welcome him as he comes up. Good morning. I had to uh, pray for you guys, and uh, Lord gave me a vision. And so I'm going to start out with that vision. The vision that I saw was quite humorous. I'm from SoCal, Southern California, and Southern California is known for growing asparagus and send it all over America. And as I was praying for SP, I saw a bunch of asparagus in the box going somewhere, talking to each other. <laughs> it was funny. Um, and uh, this, I don't know if you know, uh, asparagus is grown certain length and cut and depending on where it's shipped to, uh, it will be putting in the refrigerated train. If it's New York, they will give a little more space because although it is caught, it will be put in a moisture box, it continues to grow. So uh, depending on the location, the length of the box uh, changes. So this asparagus talking to each other and they said, hey, yo, I'm going to New York, so I need about two inch you know, buffer and on and on and on. And, and the word of the Lord came to me and said, if you ask wrong question, answer is re- irrelevant. The correct answer to wrong question is irrelevant. When you start asking about how far should I grow and you know and things like that, then the word of the Lord is get out of the box. Get out of get out of it. Don't talk about uh, and and I really do feel and, and I was here for your tenth anniversary with my favorite wife. <laughs> And I think God is launching SP into a totally different kind of field. It's not um, based on more of the Western pragmatic, pragmatic, pragmatism kind of mission or, or ministry. Because for the last 2,000 years, we've been really bought into uh, things that has to make sense. The mission has to make sense. Ministry has to make sense. And we got really into this um, almost like godless religion where we can grow church without God. Uh, we could grow church without prayer. Uh, we could do all these things for the, the sake of God and God's kingdom without God. And so I think God is launching SP personally as you as a member of the church and, and you as a church into this out-of-the-box kind of stuff. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. And uh, so that's, that's just a vision. And today, I just want to talk to you about peace. And Pastor Sam asked me to teach on that because he launched a new series called City. And I, so I checked him out last night, uh, his message last week. Wow, it was a great message. He basically talked about how, how when you get there, be there. Talk about having peace with the location that God has designated you to be. Uh, it's more like me. Many years ago, I was crying out to God at Batambang in Cambodia because I did not want to be in Cambodia. 1997, I heard from the Lord. 
Cambodia. And I cried. I said, no, you mean Hawaii. <laughs> I'm so committed to Hawaiians. I love them. And I want to give my life to these poor surfers. <laughs> and I said, Jesus, send me there. I'm willing to die for you in Hawaii. <laughs> But instead, it was Cambodia. And I fought God. I struggled with God. And I said, I don't want to do this. And But out of the fighting, I always obey because God told me I need to obey, but I obey grudgingly. In uh, 98, we start outreaching to 500 Khmer refugees in South Central, the killing fields of LA. And we end up planting a church there. And then we end up coming to Cambodia year 2000. 2001, I start coming. We launched a school in Lepers Colony in Phnom Penh. We spent $600,000, half million dollars in planting and raising and growing and and after five six years of that i still fighting god i said i don't want to be here god i don't like cambodia i don't want i want to go hawaii okay guam you know <laughs> so, can i go somewhere else and i remember going through batambang because i did 21 day prayer walk because i said i'm gonna okay, I, i need to settle this am i gonna stay or am i gonna leave So I did 21 day of prayer walk, prayer ride, motorcycle ride of Cambodia. And I remember finally meeting up with God at Batambang at hotel. And the Lord said, I will release you if you don't want it. But I would rather you obey me cheerfully. Wow. I remember weeping before God and I didn't know I was hurting God. I didn't know I was hurting Holy Spirit. He said, okay, Bob. You really want out? You're out. But, but I told you, Tobe, can't you do it cheerfully? I, I know about having peace about our location. I lived through that. I remember I wept before God and all night I was praying. I said, okay, God, you win. I will cheerfully obey you. And, and I came back to Phnom Penh. I got my first apartment there, started living there. From, now, from that point on, I live there. I live in Cambodia at least four to five months in Cambodia. So I understand about how, although you may be traveling, you're transitioning from somewhere to here and to somewhere else, but while you're here, make this your home. Have peace about the God. Have peace about having peace about the location is critical. And Pastor Sam spoke to you about that. Owning the city. This is your city. Make your home. Make it your home. Prosper in the location that God has given you. I said praise God to that. Because I'm constantly in transition. I'm constantly traveling. And I usually go through 10 to 12 countries per year. And last year, I went through like 13, 12 countries. I spent 53 days in the airplane. So I understand about what it means to transition from location to location and really having that emotional home. But so I'm going to go beyond just that because he has established that already. I'm not going to say add anything to that. But I'm going to go in a little deeper, not about having peace about the location, but then maybe we could open the door and step into something deeper, and that is having peace with yourself. Are you at peace? Are you comfortable with who you are in a place that God has sent you? And so I'm going to talk about having that peace, shalom. You know, I, I understand because... Man, uh, me and my wife, we've been married for 29 years now. Man, that's a long time. Uh, my wife would always tell the truth, and uh, the male ego cannot handle, so we used to fight. And then, you know, it took me 25 years to admit that, honey, what you said 25 years ago, you're right. <laughs> uh, it's, just, it's just male ego thing, honey. You know, and, and now I'm over 50. I think the woman hormone's kicking in, so I'm becoming more sensitive. So <laughs> that's a very good thing, you know. Uh, I, had, I had this moment four years ago. It was for our 25th anniversary, and I was in England um, getting my PhD, and, and it, my, my campus is at Oxford, you know. So I always just tell them I'm at Oxford Center for Mission Study. But the university that I belong to actually is called Middlesex. And it's hard for other people out of UK to understand I go to middle sex. You know, I'm like, but there's upper sex and lower sex? You know, I mean, what kind of name is that? Middle sex, you know. So anyway, so I'm a middle sex student. (laughs) 
campuses at Oxford, and, and in my journey, I, I would go to locations that the Lord tells me to go. And at this particular time, I was at Prague. And my wife told me, honey, you really need to deal with yourself. We've been married for 25 years, and, and you know, you're becoming very negative, very self-focused, and you have the fighting spirit. <laughs> in summary, an acronym, NSF, not sufficient fund. <laughs> negative, self-focused, fighting spirit. And so in my 25th years of marriage, I'm in Prague, and every time I visit a city, I do a prayer walk or a Things like that. Last time I was in Hong Kong, three years ago, I did eight-hour prayer walk for Hong Kong. And I remember going everywhere in Hong Kong and, you know, take the train and, you know, buy all-day train ticket and subway ticket. And I was going from one end to the other. And, and I got hungry and a lot of bunch of young people left the train. So I leave, follow them and go to Kanji place. It was great. So I did eight-hour prayer walk for Hong Kong. But just in the same manner, at Prague, it was the last day and I need to get out. And I was struggling because... My wife, my favorite wife, told me, deal with these issues because we've been married for 25 years, hon, but you're not improving in this field. You're a very, very negative person. I said, I am not you know, <laughs> negative. You know? <laughs> so <laughs> you're self-focused, and, 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 and all preachers are self-focused. You know, and, and then you have fighting spirit, and that's true. And I always fight. I always make arguments. And, and that's the whole training of philosophy. I studied philosophy at Berkeley, and I was trained to fight analyze and fight and argue and, 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 and she said it's not helping you honey I love you we've been married for 25 years deal with it so after going through this Prague uh, you know have you been to Prague it's beautiful man it's gorgeous it is the only city that uh, Hitler said don't bomb because I want to keep it all for myself after we win the battle so uh, unbarmed I mean it's just beautiful so I'm doing an 8 hour prayer walk and finally dawned on me that I could come out. It's not fighting about NSF. It's thinking about totally opposite. It's like the white elephant in the room. You know, as, as long as you think about the white elephant in the room and try not to think about it, try not to think about it, not to think about it, you're thinking about it. So instead of the white elephant in the room, you think about pink whale. <laughs> then the white elephant goes. So I realized after eight hours of walking, Lord said, think about Pop, positive, others-focused, peacemaking. Wow, it just kind of popped in my head, pop, you know. And so I'm like, wow, that's what I need to do. It was a great revelation, and I was so thankful. And then I saw, you know, the Prague is made out of this semi-precious marble, the whole street, you know, this huge block like that. And I want to remember that day, so I took one of the block out. Wrote out my Prague declaration from this day forward. I'm going to be positive, others focused, and peacemaking. And I tried to bring that into airport. I, didn't, I completely forgot that I only carried a backpack. And, and, I was, and, and the border patrol from Prague took out the block <laughs> and looked at me. And he, and he didn't speak any English. I don't speak any, I don't know, Czech. And he said, are you kidding me? <laughs> are you kidding me? You're going to take this to the airplane? It's like a weapon, man. It's like a huge rock. It's like a marble this big. And I said, hey, man, give me a break, all right? <laughs> I mean, we just communicate. You know? <laughs> it's like, let me go, all right? He goes, ah, all right, you know. So he's still sitting in my house, you know, Prague Declaration. That day I realized how important peacemaking is. Because for the last 25 years of my marriage, I was fighting my wife, you know. And, and, and it's not like I hate her or, no, no. It's just in my, in my nature, as in my DNA. I was designed to make argument, fight, because I'm breaking new ground. I'm on, I have apostolic anointing. I travel to other countries and, and break new fresh ground. And unless you destroy what's there, you cannot rebuild on it. So it's been a long process. And I said, honey, I am so sorry that I did not realize about who I am. And it took me a long, long, long time for me to understand what it means to be peacemaking. Peacemaking. And that's what I'm going to tell you about today. You've now committed through last week's message that you're going to not commit it to Hong Kong. That's great. Wherever you are, be there. And as you are in Hong Kong, now you need to make a commitment. Am I going to be at peace with myself? 
How am I going to live this life and, and not fight who I am and, and what God has called me into this place and, and really make difference? Amen? Man, this is man, this, this going to be a great message. I'm excited for you. <laughs> Would you tell your neighbor, I'm so glad you're here. I'm so glad you're here. Yeah, it's, it's, this message is worth a couple of fall, man. <sighs> Anyways. Where am I? Oh, okay, so... <laughs> I, I'm the, the peace with God is first step in which that you're going to have peace about yourself. Until you have peace with God, there'll be no peace. Now, you may have known Jesus for 20 years or 15 years, 5 years, and you may even been passionately serving the Lord in the past, but until you have continuous peace with God, you're not going to have peace with yourself. Think about that. I've been Christian for 34 years, and I've been married to my wife for 25 years, but part of me was not working because I would constantly fight. And you know, the key thing as a Christian we must realize is that we need to be with peace with God in the area of salvation. I I come from a very strong evangelical tradition. I come from a very strong charismatic tradition. I come from a very evangelical seminary called Fuller. I got my doctor of ministry. I got my master of uh, theology. Everything at Fuller. And so theologically I'm pretty sound. But I think the one area in which that the Western theology has missed is the whole experience or the whole aspect of existential salvation. It's, it's all about recognizing I'm a sinner, I'm confessing with my mouth, believing in my heart. The logo says, I am saved, so I must be saved, right? I said the prayer seventh grade at a retreat, so I must be saved, right? Well, yes, theologically, if you just subscribe into Western theology, yes. But are you living the life of a saved person? That's a different story. And yet we don't understand that. Because it is only the realm of cognitive understanding. It's like I understand that I am saved. But are you living? Is it existential enough? Is it real? And I'm so glad the next generation, that's you, are asking the right question. They're not asking, is your theology right? They're asking, is it real? In the same way, I mean, if you go to back to Old Testament, with it, you feel like, oh, is the Old Testament full of just doctrines and full of rules and regulation? No, it's not. If you read it clearly, understand clearly, it is full of stories of people who have been saved by God and live a life that is appropriate like someone who encounter God, experiencing God, and they're experiencing God daily, and they understand what it means to be saved. Think about King David. I mean, David predates everybody. He, he's, he doesn't really, we, we cannot even talk about Jesus because Jesus comes out of that line. But David, in the most difficult place in his life, he talks about salvation in a very personal way. You know the story, right? David was supposed to be in the war. He doesn't go out and he gets up late in the afternoon and see a woman taking a bath. And so bring her and rapes her impregnate her and try to cover that up, brings Uriah, her husband, from the, and, and then eventually he's a righteous man and kills him. Wow, terrible, terrible thing. And then the prophet Nathan comes and thou art the sinner. And King David repents, man. And he repents in a way that is very public. That's what happens when religious folks sin. They try to cover it up. But when people who encounter in God sin, they make it public. They confess. Matter of fact, he made a song out of that experience. It's in Psalm 51. He cries out to God, Create in me a clean heart. You know, you know that, right? We, we, we lost the song. We only had the lyrics. So we need Keith Green from 60s. Yeah. Yeah, man. He, he, man, he just... That's one song that I wish I wrote. <laughs> Looking at Psalm 51, he writes, Create in me a clean heart. Oh, God, and renew a right spirit within me. Create in me a clean heart. Oh, God, and renew a right 
Spirit within me, cast me not away from thy presence, O Lord. Take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and renew a right spirit within me. I'm waiting for clapping right now. Okay. I haven't changed any lyrics, so this is the word of God. This is what King David wrote. And Keith Green understood the spirit in which he wrote and Listen to what King David says. He says, Lord, I, I, I missed that fellowship with you. I, I, I got out of that fellowship with you ever since I sinned against you. And, 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 and he ver- the, the beginning tr- part of the chapter, he says, God, I've sinned against you and you only. Man, Uriah will be so upset in heaven. <laughs> like, what you just say, man? You know? <laughs> but Sheba will be so upset, like, you raped me. You impregnated me. And you killed my husband. You're saying that I've sinned, only sinned against God only? See, what he was saying is not that he doesn't feel bad about it. He says the only one who could forgive him is God from sin. And he makes it clear that he connects that undeniable, undeserved grace to God and said, God, I'm out of relationship with you. Restore unto me this joy, joy of salvation. I lost God. I need to get back there. God, restore unto me. Get that spirit right. I, I need to be saved. I, I need to be in that place of relationship with you, God. Man, doesn't it sound like someone who's saved? Doesn't it sound like someone who understands what salvation is? I met too many people that in my 50 country travel that who says that I accepted Jesus 15 years ago and I'm doing jack about the Lord right now. I'm living for myself, living for my family, living for my career, living for my prosperity, living for my security. In those things, I find security and I find peace. Now, there's a king that who has everything. He says, restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. It means nothing. Everything I own means nothing, Lord. I need you, God. Come back to me. I need you. He was seeking peace with God because he lost it. What about you? What about you? And then then I pray, and now I'm going to pray actually for all of you today after the service so that, that you get back to that place, the intimate relationship with God, that you are not bankrupt. That you will not have to deal with NSF, but that you will be positive, others focused, and peacemaking in your relationship, in your relationship with people. See, it starts out by having that peace with God so that, that you know that you know that you are saved, that you know that God is real, that you know that you're followers of God, and you know that Jesus is real, and you are risking, you are following as the God has become the pillar of cloud and pillar of fire leading and guiding, that you are willing to say, yes, Lord, I'm going to go, I'm going to follow, and I pray that your life will be a wonderful journey of obeying and ex- discovering and experiencing God to, to the max. Hallelujah. Amen. In the process of doing that, the first person that you, as you find peace with God, that you need to find peace with others, starting with the the, the circle of influence, your family. If you're married, your spouse. How many of you are married? Raise your hand. Wow, great. It's good to be married, right? But there's no amen in this place. All right. (laughs) So... I mean, maybe I need to preach on marriage issue more than peace. But <laughs> it's good to be married. Just, just believe. Just believe. After 25 years, it's going to get better. <laughs> you know, the spouse, the one you love, family that you live with, are oftentimes the one that you hurt the most. Mm, you know, I love that classic movie. Uh, was it Crouching Tiger or Itching Tiger or something like that? Uh, what was that movie? Dragon, Crouching Tiger and Itching Dragon or something like that. Yeah, Hidden Dragon. Oh, I love that movie. Uh, I think I watched that three times. And there's a part 
There's that uh, the evil woman, you know. Yeah, the fox. You know, the last word she said to that girl, that you're the only family and the only enemy. Wow. It rings so true. Because a lot of the times in our spiritual journey, the enemy turns it on. And the enemy wants you to fight your family. There's no shalom, peace in your family. So you want to be the man of peace in the city? Forget the city, man. Your family is at war. Forget the, your workplace. Your, your fam, there's, there's a war in your family, in your, whether they be spouse or in your children. You know, it's just crazy, right? It needs to start in your home. You know, I've been, as I told you, I've been married with my wife for many years now. And at the beginning stage of my marriage, I didn't understand that. Here I am, I'm preaching all over the world, preaching the gospel, and I'm meeting people, say, well, well, you know, you're you're good, whatever, and you stroke your ego, and I didn't know it was devil, you know, so I'm, you know, buying into that. And I come home, and my wife is so unhappy with me. I'm like, what is is wrong with her, you know? Here I am, I just preached in front of 10,000 people. I mean, that was 1992. You know, I'm 10,000 people, and it's like, it was great. I come home, and, and, and she said, great, take out the garbage. I'm like, what? Telling this man of God to take out garbage. In it. <laughs> After all these years, man, I know the secret of handling your wife. You must have your last words, guys. You must have your last I'm telling you, you must stand your ground, have your last word. You know the last word, right? Yes, dear. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I take out the garbage, you know. and I didn't understand. The whole importance of the spiritual dimension, how enemy truly attacks your family. One time, you know, we got into this debate. You know, we don't really fight about anything other than ministry. My wife is gung-ho pastor. She wants me to do well and grow the church and all that. I'm like, I'm always out there doing other stuff in other countries. So I come home and she really, really getting on my nerves now. And we're, we get into this like, wow, what, are you talk, what do you want me to do? No, no, no. You know, I was like, I don't know, 29, young. You know, I'm 52 now. So I'm young. I'm, and you know, we're having this verbal battle going on. And then specifically I heard the demon come to me and said, strike her. And at that very moment, I stopped. I said, Jenny, stop. I just heard something. And I think for some reason, a dumb demon was dispatched to our family. Because this dumb demon does not know, honey, your dad is 10th degree grandmaster, taekwondo. <laughs> I hit you, I die. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so I said, Jenny, I think there's a spiritual dimension to our fight. Do you, do, you, do you sense it? And I remember getting on our knees, putting our hands together, and we prayed. I said, Lord, we thought you were just fighting. But there's a spiritual dimension into this thing that try to destroy the peace in our family. Recognize there's a demonic spirit at hand. When the shalom in your family is broken, there's a spiritual dimension, there's a battle rages on, and you are a casualty of that. Listen, pray, take it seriously, because there's no peace at home, there's no peace in the city. If you don't have peace with God, there will be no peace at home. First and foremost, make sure your salvation is certain. Make sure that you are saved, born again. You know God without any shadow of doubt. It's not shallow theology of I blabbed it, I believed it, I must be saved. No, do you have a proof in your life? Faith without action is dead. Do you have dead faith? They believe, 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 believe that you are saved and heaven bound and die and go to hell. I'd rather you doubt salvation the rest of your life and perfect your salvation in fear and trembling than to believe something blindly. No, salvation is very important, guys. Make it real. Make it real. Doubt it. And if you're not certain, pray fast. Cry out to God. God, I want to be in your presence. Created me a clean heart, oh God. I've sinned against you. The Hong Kong, the spirit of Hong Kong, the love of money, the prosperity, the spirit of getting ahead and and we're better and, and all that kind of crap. Lord, I'm just full of Hong Kong crap in my mind. Cleanse my heart, O oh God, that I may encounter you for real. The salvation, make it real, God. I, I renew that spirit within me, God. And once you get it, now settle the account with others, starting with your husband, 
starting your wife, starting with children, starting with your co-worker, starting your mom, starting your dad. Make sure there's a shalom, peace. You can disagree, but there must be shalom. I'm not saying that you have to agree. You know what? Being peacemaking, people think like, oh, man, I have to just give in and, and be nice. No, it's not anything to do with being nice. You must be nice, but it has nothing to do with give in and let people just step all over you. It's not. My wife and I, we spent a couple, last, was it last month, we spent time in Poland and time in Siberia. And it was, Siberia was a great homecoming for me because we spent 10 years planting 27 churches there and now they're all grown and multiply. One church already planted 10 churches. So it was a great homecoming. It was a great time. I remember going to Siberia for the first time, you know, many years ago, 1998 or something. Went to Siberia and walked into a bank and tried to cash my money. Standing in long line, you know, Russia in those days, long line. And in the middle of the line, whatever, I'm standing and some, this Russian dude, I mean, out of nowhere, walks into the bank and straight, I mean, bypass everybody and I'm standing here he cuts right in front of me and I'm like dude what's going on you know probably mafia guy I don't know but I mean people think like oh you must, you must be a peacemaker right just take it I'm saying no no that's not what peacemaking is you see and so I said yeah you know because he doesn't know English or Korean so I, I break out into Korean yeah you know <laughs> he looked and then I want to say something, but then I realize only word I know in Russian is thank you. <laughs> so, so I said, ah, oh, darn, I only know thank you, you know? So, and, and it's spasiba, you know. But you could say spasiba in a way that could be very offensive. <laughs> Especially if you translate into Korean, I say, spasiba. <laughs> Whoa, whoa, the boy got it. <laughs> you know, I grabbed him and looked straight in his eye. Spashiba. <laughs> and, and he took a walk, you know, he went back. So peacemaking is not like, oh, let them have their ways, you know. I spent three days in Sanya. I hate that place. I was there, somehow my credit card didn't register in the hotel, whatever. They will not cash my money. I went hungry. And uh, I'm trying to be nice to people. I'm trying to be a peacemaker in, you know, hotel, whatever. I was at Howard Johnson. And, and there's a pathway. There's a, only two people could walk. And I'm walking one path, and there are two tourists from China coming toward me. And I'm a very nice American. I'm sunny Southern California, you know. Hi, you know. How are you? You know, I'm walking. And these two guys, no emotion, and walking, expect me to step aside so they could walk across. I said, are you kidding me? You know? So I'm like, hi. <laughs> <laughs> and one guy stepped aside. I'm like, you think peacemaking is just being stupid and just being mellow and let everybody have their ways? No, it's not. that's not what the Bible says. Peacemaking is a very active thing. It is, taking, it is taking your position, will not allow nonsense to happen, will not help others to cut line and be, tell them it's okay because we're peacemaking. It's not. There are times in your life right now that you have to make peace, but you're not. Sometimes your greatest weakness could be the greatest wickedness. Check this out. We're like, oh, I'm just, you know, just going to give in. Sin of denial. I'm just going to let them do what it... No, you, you're not dealing with the issue here. God is telling you to make it right, but you're not because you don't want to deal with it. Especially guys. Come on. Because guys, we want to be shallow. Ah, we like to be shallow. We don't want to talk about deep issues. So every time my wife said, Honey, we need to talk about... Can we just keep it shallow? <laughs> I like shallow, you know. <laughs> but guys, there are times that you need to deal with it. You need to deal with the issue. Go on with life. But you... God is telling you to make peace about that relationship, about that issue, about that whatever that you're going through. Pray about it. And you know what? You have to admit that you cannot do it on your own. Amen? You need God. That's why we're going to pray today. We're going to ask God to empower you so that you could deal with that issue and go beyond whatever the vicious cycle that you've been going through. You know, maybe 20 or 30 40, doesn't matter. If you don't deal with that Red Sea now, 
10 years from now, you're going to be in the same spot, looking over the same Red Sea you must cross. Amen? And if you don't deal with it, you're going to come back. You know, and they're like, oh, I'm, I'm still young. No, it doesn't matter how young or old you are. You must cross the Red Sea in your life that God gives every decade. You know, because it will come. You need to deal with that. You know what? And thirdly, what you need to do is not only have peace and dealing with peace issue, you must become the man of peace or the woman of peace. What I call mop or wop. <laughs> man of peace, mop. You need to become that because... God is giving you people. You know what? Pastor Sam has become my man of peace for Hong Kong. That's why every time I come Hong Kong, I call him up. Until he rejects me, he said, I don't. Pastor, I'm done with you. Move on with your life. That's what the Bible says. I'm just going through the Bible, man. They read Matthew 10. Jesus says to send out the apostles, go to the city and look for a man of peace and woman of peace. And when you find them, settle there until they kick you out. And when they kick you out, dust off your feet, move on. Because God is taking... I use the principle every place I go. I've been to 50 countries. I was just at recently, my 50th country was Poland. You know how I went to Poland? This man of peace, this crazy guy named Peter, he's a missionary to Thailand. He's a Polish missionary to Thailand. He started emailing me two years ago or a year and a half ago saying, Pastor O, I download your book, Prayer Driven Life. I read it. We did 21 day fast. There are a lot of miracles. This is a great book. Would you give me copyright so I could publish in Polish? I'm like, okay, whatever. Yeah, sure. You know, I said, sure, it's yours. You know, I don't have copyright on that book. And then six months later, we're, we're, we're now translating. We're going to publish. And I don't really, okay, that's great. And then he says, hey, Bob, Pastor, you are in Malaysia. Like, it was our 28th anniversary or something. And I was with my wife at Sinta Sayang, Malaysia. And she, he says, hey, I'll be in Malaysia. Can I visit you? Now, he's t- taking very personal. He wants to come to my vacation. <laughs> you know? I'm like, well, what do you want to come to my vacation? He said, well, I want to see you. So Peter comes along, along with two of the intercessors. Come to Sinta Sayang. <laughs> And she, he says, wow, and I, I really like him. He's a young guy in his mid-40s, no, mid-30s, and he's a great guy. And then this woman, Stella, this Malaysian lady, comes into my hotel room, you know, this, this the Malaysian woman says, I hate this room, this bad hotel. I take you to a different hotel. She books us into a different hotel, then looking over the ocean. I mean, just crazy stuff. So we just really like each other. <laughs> More, more me to, their, to her, you know? Anybody books me to a nice, nicer hotel, I like, you know? So she became my WAP and he became my MOP. And so then I get an email saying that, Pastor o, we've gathered something like 10 city churches, about 200 people are gathering at Poland, El Blanc, Poland, and we're doing a prayer driven life conference. You're the speaker, of course, because we're publishing that book, and there are people going through this incredible stuff. You know, and like, wow. See, God gives man and woman of peace in your life. But you have to become the man and woman of peace in your life as well. See, I've experienced God's grace. I go there. This is great, right? And, 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 and so this, this lady, old Polish grandma, we were there for four days. And she would cook us breakfast, lunch, and dinner, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I mean, she would not leave us alone. Like, and so we just named her. I don't know her name. So we just called her Martha. Martha you know, she said... <laughs> And this Grandma Martha, you know, why are you so nice to us? Why are you, you know, feeding us three meals a day? Through a translator, she was giving testimony. She said, Pastor O, I was reading your book on the, and fasting 21 days. And on the 12th day, while she was reading, all the demons started leaving her. She experienced demon leaving her just reading my book. I'm like, yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> Tell me more. Yeah, uh-huh. You know, that's great, right? And she's so grateful. When we finished the conference, leaving Poland, and she came and met my wife, and I was there and opened up the box. It was really beautiful pearl bracelet. And she said, this is the most precious thing I own, and, and I want to give it to you, Jenny. I'm sitting there like, what? I wrote the book, you know. <laughs> but, <laughs> but man, I have a grandma piece in El Blanc, Poland. And because to her, I became the man of peace in her life. Because I was fasting 40 days, writing that book, 2007. And Lord said, write, and I shall provide. And God's been providing. And that book is now translated into six languages. And then it's amazing what God can do. You know, in your life, 
in your journey happen to be here now, be here at Hong Kong, and become the man and woman of peace, encountering God, but make sure before anything, before you talk about issues as a Christian, issues as a couple, make sure your salvation is intact. Make sure that you're saved, that you're absolutely certain, beyond shadow of doubt, and out of that, peace, shalom. Start working, having peace with others, with your spouse. You know, wives, let me tell you right now, your husband will not change. Accept that. Don't make your life goal to change your husband because they're not going to change. Talk to God. God will say, only I could change. Amen? Come on, woman, you could do better than that. Amen? Amen. Guys, love your wife. Yes, they're getting older. Am I too real for you? Man, love her with everything you've got. You know, it's at peace because your children are living off of that peace. The shalom that you create, that's what they eat off of. God, break that curse of, of, of having that dispute, the spirit of fighting and, 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 and all that. And then, man, I, I wish, I pray that you will not wait 25 years of your life to realize that. I pray that there'll be shalom in your family, in your workplace, in your church. And if every time there's a thing that comes into you to break that away from this church, from the city, and from your home, fight it. There's a spiritual dimension to that. Amen? And I ask the Holy Spirit, because you cannot do it alone. We are too weak to be victorious on our own. We're going to pray together now, the Holy Spirit to come and manifest himself that you'll be victorious. Amen? Let's pray. Worship team, come on up. We're going to spend some time in prayer. Mm. Let's do this. I think we, we, we're ready to do this. Can we all stand up and just grab hands to next to each other? Let's just become one family. This is an awesome side of SP family coming together and just... Man, I pray shalom, the past that surpass all understanding, peace that surpass all understanding. And let's just pray for one another. Pray for one another. Pray for one another. Hmm. Pastor Sam, would you just face them and just, man, let's pray that God will make this family an awesome family of God. I ask for shalom to manifest. Was there any brokenness in the family? Is there any relationship that has been scarred because of the things that we should not have said or is that the baggage that we brought into our marriage, our family, even to church and, and some of the unkind words that we said and some kind of attitude that we had and, and the enemy has been working over time to break this church, break this family, break the units in, within the family in the church. Can you just repent before God now of your participant, your active role in creating that rift Oh yeah, you, you're not only a victim, but you are a participant. Without repentance, there will be no rebuilding. So let's just spend some time in repenting before God. For the peace of God, shalom to come. But let's repent before God together, shall we? Let's pray. So Father, we lift up our hands. and Father, we lift up these people to you, God. We want to have shalom, God. We want to have peace, oh God. We don't want to go on living, Lord, and, and act like everything's fine when there's a battle rages on in, within us and within church and within family, within couples, within children. Lord, God, I pray, Lord, that we repent, Lord God, the role that I played in that, God. And I said, I'm so sorry, Lord God, because I'm so self-righteous at times about things that I think I'm right about, God. And I, I'm even there, Lord God, I repent. I said, I'm sorry. I, I die to myself and I die to even my own rights of being right and say, Lord God, who am I to judge? Who am I to say I'm right? Lord, so I repent, Lord God. So Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. Would you just open your just heart and, and as you pray for that person next to you, left and right, their heart will be open and the anointing of the Holy, there will be impartation of the Holy Spirit come and, and, and God would empower them so that they could become agent of peace. They will become the man and woman of peace that they will really bring peace and make peace in the situation. Let's pray for them right now. Let's pray together. So God, I just ask for your favor, Lord God. 
anointing, 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 and favor, favor, favor to come, Lord God. The blessing come, Lord God. And they will truly, Father, become the man and woman of God, men and woman of peace, Lord God, bringing peace to the situation where they will make peace, Lord, not just stand by and let it happen and, and let it evolve into something that is not. Father, I pray that they will become active agents in making peace, O oh God. Let them be the Lydia of Philippi to Paul, Lord God. Let them be that man, Father, that who really brings them into their fold, Lord God. And bring them, bring them, bring them, Lord God. I ask that the principle that they practice, Father, will be lived out by the power and anointing of the Holy Spirit, O oh God. We thank you, we praise you, we give you glory. Yes, Lord God. Father, we worship you, we praise you, give you glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Father, we thank you, Lord God. Give you glory, Acts uh, 3, verse 19 says, Repent, therefore, and return, that your sins may be wiped away, in order that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. And so as Pastor was saying, you can't have peace with others in this city unless you first have peace with God. And so I just want to give you an opportunity this morning to make peace with God. And whatever that means for you, maybe you did something that you shouldn't have done or maybe you feel so far away this is promise and so I just want to give you an opportunity individually to go before the Lord because he's here he's here to listen to your heart he's here to listen to your prayers it's so simple repent and return that's his heart for you because he wants you to walk in the fullness of all that he has for you The times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. And so can I just invite you individually? Go before the Lord and make peace. Repent and return. Now let's pray together. Now, if the Lord has been speaking to your heart, as Pastor O is sharing, and you know that you need to make peace with somebody, it could be your dad, your spouse, or whatever it is, we're going to pray right now for an empowering, that you'd be a peacemaker. We don't need peacekeepers. Peacekeepers just let things go. That's what Pastor O is talking about. But peacemakers are a whole different matter altogether. And so if, you, if there is some relationship that you're struggling in, you know, it could be from your family or maybe a colleague, but you know there's some discord and God has convicted you this morning to be a peacemaker, we're going to pray right now for an empowering, uh, for strength, for wisdom, for boldness, right? that, that you'd really kind of get a little bit uncomfortable, like the vision he shared, that we get out of the box a little bit so that we can grow. Can we do that? Let's just close our eyes and let's just pray right now. Say, Lord, Lord, I need an empowering God. This is something I can't do myself. I can't will for my heart to change. I can't will for something to happen. Lord, you need to do it. So, Lord, I submit myself and I give myself to you right now for an empowering to be that peacemaker with my relationship with my spouse, my colleague, my brother, my sister. It could be a brother and sister in Christ, in church. Whatever it is, Lord, I give this person to you. But more than that, I give you my heart, God. Change my heart. Move on my heart, Lord. 
And let your love that covers a multitude of sins begin to flow. Let's pray that right now. Pray for that for yourself. If you need an empowering from God, Holy Spirit is here to do that. Uh, Let's pray. Let's go before the Lord. We're going to continue to pray, and uh, Pastor O will be here to minister to people. Let's sing this song together as an anthem uh, as we close our service. Cast me not, cast me not away from Thy presence, O Lord, and take Thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me. The joy of thy salvation and renew a right spirit within me. Father, we thank you for the word today, God. Let it just sink in our hearts now, God. Let it move down, Lord, from our head, God, to our heart. And Holy Spirit, you churn that within us, God. Or that word that was. God, sweet to our mouth, God, now let it be bitter in our stomachs, Lord. As Spirit of God begins to work that into our lives, Lord. And we pray, God, that we would be peacemakers, Lord. That we would take shalom with us everywhere we go, but it would start here, right now, in our hearts. Or the light that shines the farthest, God, shines brightest at home. And so we commit ourselves, God, to our homes, Lord. We thank you, Father. Watch over us, Lord, this week as we make peace. We love you, God. We bless you, Lord. Now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord causes face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. And the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace, shalom, from this day forever. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If you need to leave, you can leave uh, quietly. If you want to come up and receive some prayer, Pastor will be here. I'll be here. If you're serious about peacemaking and and come and we'll lay hands on you and bless you, uh, please join us for some refreshments. Sign up for the men's retreat in the back and have a great week this week. Again, if you want to come and be prayed for, feel free to come.